Okay, let's talk about the Praxis Algebra 1 exam. So if you're watching this video, definitely assume that you already know what the Praxis exam is and specifically the Algebra 1 exam uh, is because, uh, you know, this is a very specific exam. And just uh, in case uh, you're not sure what it is, the Praxis exam is a teacher certification exams that do a lot in many states out there. You have to pr uh, pass these particular Praxis exams in order to be certified to teach a particular level. So what I want to talk about in this video is the Algebra 1 exam. So it's, it's the specific Praxis exam for Algebra 1 so you can teach Algebra 1. So for me as a teacher, I've taught sixth grade all the way through college, Algebra 1 is, I really enjoy teaching Algebra 1. It's one of those really fundamental courses and it's so critical too because you're really taking students kind of out of the middle school kind of math mindset, if you will, and you're really establishing uh, the core for what, you know, the really the foundation, uh, the core foundation of uh, the more advanced high school mathematics. So if you don't get Algebra 1 right, then the rest of their math, <laughs> you know, students, what you build on top of that is going to, it's just not going to work. So that's why Algebra um, algebra 1 is such a critical um, course. So if you're going to, you know, be an Algebra 1 teacher, if that's what you're obviously striving for by taking this exam, good on you. I think you'll really enjoy it, but you got to know your stuff for sure. You know, I have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree, and you, you know, just because you have, just because you know how to do calculus and differential equations, I'm assuming that, you know, I'm speaking to some math-minded folks, oftentimes uh, you kind of, we kind of get distance away from all the algebra because it's so easy for us let's say if you're doing you know you know calculus for example you're like oh that's easy that's easy but relatively speaking remember you're going to be a teacher right it's just you're not going to just be doing problems you need to really be immersed in the the topic to the point where you understand how to communicate it and teach it to a wide variety of students so you really do have to have a complete mastery um, of Algebra 1 okay now of course you've all taken the course um, and along your educational path but now you have to go back and revisit it and and you know really make sure you have all those things down by the way um, if you're looking for a good Praxis Algebra 1 course, full comprehensive course, I actually offer one I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you want to check that out extremely comprehensive um, so but anyways you can check that out at your leisure what I want to do is challenge you to a problem okay so this is definitely a kind of problem that you should be able to handle for the Praxis Algebra 1 and here it is so here we got uh, here we have an XY axis and I have some sort of quadratic function so little, my little parabola here and it's topping out here at 5 so what I want to know is what is the function what is the function of this quadratic equation right so what's the what's the full equation here so y equals ax squared plus bx plus c format so can you get that for me all right so uh, I think what this is probably a good time where you might want to pause the video and work on it for a minute or two to see if you can you know uh, answer this question you definitely need to be able to answer a question like this for you know the algebra one exam because this is obviously you know uh, you know algebra one level you know kind of question all right so I'm gonna assume that you pause the video give it a whirl and there's a couple different ways you probably can approach this problem I'm gonna go in and go through it now and then we'll see you know kinda of how you did all right so here we have a quadratic uh, parabola bouncing off the x-axis at 5. So that means 5 is a double root, right? So just a quick review for those of you out there you probably already know. So if I have my parabola going through the x-axis at two points, I have two real roots, okay? The x-intercepts, the respective x-intercepts, x1, let's say, x2, or my two real roots here, I can just have x1. This point would be a double root, right? So remember quadratic equations or quadratics or a subset or, or uh, polynomials, right? So you're, you're talking about the fundamental uh, theorem of algebra. 
So quadratics degree two polynomial, there's always going to be two uh, solutions. Now I'm kind of talking quickly because wh who's watching this video? You were going for algebra one. Again, I'm assuming you have a math background, right? So I don't want to patronize you and kind of talk beneath you, but some of this is you may need to go back and review, all right? So here we have two real roots, one double root, and then of course you can have the situation like this where we're not crossing through the x-axis at x-axis at all. So now we're talking about imaginary complex uh, roots. But either way, you're going to have two roots, right? With any quadratic um, equation. So here, five is our double root. So we can write that this way, x minus five times x minus five equals zero. Okay, so if I was able to, let's actually go in and multiply this together. So we have what, x squared, we use the FOIL method, minus 5x, minus 5x, and then plus 25 equals 0. So I have x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. So here I have the double root. Um, if I solve this, I'm going to have a double root at 5. However, this, what's, what's the matter with this picture if I multiply these two binomials? I have x squared minus 10x plus 25, let's turn this into a function, right? Let's just say y equals x squared minus 10x plus 25. Now, if you look at this and you're saying, well, there's our function, it, this has a double root, okay, because we could factor this out and then use a zero uh, product property and solve for five. However, this right here, if you were to graph this, the, this particular quadratic function goes this way. It's not what we want, right? Remember, on a when you have um, your quadratic equations written in standard form, we need to have a negative in front of that x squared to make the parabola go upside down. Okay, so here clearly we don't. This is just positive, so we're going to have to fix this, right? We need to get a negative in front of there. So I'm going to have to divide everything. I need to get this negative um, in front of this x squared. So that means I'm going to have to change the signs on everything. So Let's go back to this function here. If I just divide everything, if I put a negative here, or you want to divide by negative one, let's say, this has to be a negative, this has to be positive, and this becomes negative, okay? So now my function y equals negative x squared plus 10x minus 25 gives me the double roots when I factor this out, okay, at five, and also the graph is gonna be Ups, an upside down parabola bouncing at five. Okay, so this is a you know a, kind of a medium level type of problem. Uh, again, I'm certain that you know this, right? Or you did know it at one time. Okay, uh, but you're gonna have to kind of get your algebra brain in gear, immerse yourself in it. And I think the worst thing can happen to uh, to students going back um, to teach a particular topic is you know, oh yeah, I, I study that, I know math, I have a degree in math, I do this, that. Yeah, that's not a good, a good approach because remember, you know, each of these courses are different. You know, think about it. Algebra 1 is going to be completely different than what you're going to be in Algebra 2. and I mean, sorry, in Geometry, then Algebra 2 is going to be different or an extension of Algebra 1. And then you get into pre-calculus, you're dealing with trig and, and other, you know, uh, basic uh, kind of sequence and series and calculus related concepts and then you're in calculus it's a different world you know you're doing all kinds of stuff you know you're 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 far away from what's going on in algebra one yeah you're bringing these skills forward but you're going to be the you're going to be teaching algebra one i mean you have to get complete immersion in it and really study these topics as in 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 more detail so they're, they're crystal clear to you on how to approach any number of different problems because that's how you get, that's how you become a good teacher. The way you become a good teacher is for you to be a complete, you know, expert on all these scenarios so you can you can relate to them, okay? Remember, your algebra 1 students don't care about algebra 2 pre-calculus. They don't really care about your knowledge over here. All that that of course is helping you with your math skills, but you all you have to focus in here on on algebra 1. So let's go and wrap this video up. Hopefully, you're able to uh you know, knock this problem out of the ballpark. So that's excellent. But again, if you're looking for a great, uh, uh, 
course uh, for the Praxis Algebra 1 exam. I think mine is, is second to none. So I'll leave the link again in the description uh, in this video. You can check that out. I also have like literally hundreds of videos that if you like my teaching style, again, my teaching style is my own personal teaching style, but it, it's, it was, you know, kind of the result of how I teach, you know, how I taught you know, students in an actual classroom setting. So, you know, it's not, it's, I'm not just a person with a math degree talking about math. I'm, I'm coming at this as, from an educational perspective, right? When I teach, um, you know, I teach to, you know, students, right? That's who I'm speaking to. I'm always in that kind of mindset. So it's, you know, when you, when you have to, you know, uh, teach others, especially young people, you know, you kind of develop, you know, your your uh, a certain unique teaching uh, style. So if you resonate with mine, you know, check out my videos there. It'll definitely help you. If you enjoyed the video, I would certainly appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Let me know how things are going. Um, you know, maybe uh, if you're going to be going into middle school, you know, uh, teaching or high school. But I, again, Algebra 1 is a great course to teach. Um, you know, I really enjoyed it, you know, and, and it's a critical course. So I wish you all the best on the Praxis exam, uh, the Algebra 1 exam and all the Praxis exams. They're, they're, they're challenging, you know, and you should respect them for sure because, you know, um, I think those people that don't take them seriously in terms of the preparation, you know, people fail these exams. <laughs> I knew quite a few people, and when I took uh, the practice exam, I had to work hard to, to be able to study, you know, and, 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 you know, get through it. So I wish you all the best on the practice uh, exam. Uh, thank you for your time. I wish you, uh, you know, uh, nothing but, you know, great things in your educational uh, career. But uh, again, thanks for watching, and have a great day.